you are created to believe. Blessed are those who believe without seeing, for faith is the sight that says God is who he says he is. When you believe, it pleases God. When you speak, God is moved to action. Abraham believed God and was set right with God. Moment by moment he delivers. Strength for weakness. Joy for sorrow. Hope for the hopeless. Eternal life for all who believe. So take God at his word. Believe it in your heart, in your struggles, in your victories, and see what he will do. How it will change your life forever. I just want to thank my parents just for allowing me to speak to you guys today. Uh, you know, I'm excited. Uh, so, you know, we're just about to have a good time. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you that every person here that's under the sound of my voice is, leaves here blessed. Father, I thank you that you use me in the way you see fit, Lord. And I thank you that you, that you just uh, tell your word to your people, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. So this is the fifth and final lesson of the series called Believe that my dad started. And the main point of this series is that we rely on God throughout every type of challenging situation that we face through our lives and that, uh, you know, that we have to turn to him through whatever we're facing. Now, the backstory to this, to this uh, entire series is a story of a father who brings his sick son to Jesus. And uh, Jesus tells him that, Whatever he believes is what he's going to get, and that the possibilities for his life are set based off of what he believes. So we can look at it in Mark 9, 22 to 24. And often he has, him thrown, he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can't do anything, have compassion on us and help him. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. So our, our ability to believe governs what we receive from God. Amen. And that faith is what's used to ensure us victory in any type of situation that we're facing. Yes. And, you know, it says in the Bible, at 1 John 5, 4, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. Now, because that we understand that faith is the key to us succeeding in what, in try, what we're trying to get, you know, there are four faith truths that we have to get. The first faith truth is that I will always have what I say, because our words have power. Now, if you're always speaking doubt and negativity or complaining, those are the exact type, those are the, uh, sorry, those are the exact results that you're going to get. You're going to receive negative and basically results that you don't really want. Whereas if you're speaking words of life and words of God, you're going to start seeing the, word, the results that you want to see. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So it's our jobs to get rid of any type of doubt or unbelief that's in our hearts. Amen. Because as, as, we keep, as we continue to keep speaking God's truth and God's word, we're going to start getting, getting a foundation and we're going to establish ourselves in God's truth. Amen. The second faith, faith truth that we have to get is I'll always believe what I hear the most. <laughs> it's important to watch who you, who you surround yourself with in your environment. Because if you're around friends who are always speaking negatively about how this went wrong, how that went wrong, how someone cut them off on the parkway, how something went wrong in their day, you're going to end up finding yourself saying the exact same things and you're going to start getting negative results. Yes. Romans 10:17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. So that's why it's important that we listen to teaching at all, at all times. 
because what we listen to on a regular basis will set the course for our lives. So my dad, he, he recommends that we listen to about an hour of teaching per day. Now, what you listen to for the teaching is completely, it's completely based on you. So if you need strengthening in something, if you're, if you're believing for healing, then you should listen, listen to a series on healing over and over again. Just whatever is relevant to you, that's what you listen to. And that way, as you keep hearing it and hearing it, you'll have knowledge of it and you'll start to understand it and then maybe even share it to others. Amen. So that's really the only way that faith comes is if, if we keep hearing it and hearing it. It's almost the same as studying because when you study for a test, you're studying so that way you know the material, right? So it's the same thing. If you keep hearing and hearing the word of God over and over again, you're going to start knowing it and then you're going to be confident in it because you know that, you know, that's the teaching. Luke 17, 3 to 5 says, So watch yourself. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day, and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, Show us to increase our faith. Now, the disciples had trouble with, with understanding forgiveness, and they went to Jesus, their teacher. Now, that's why God gives us pastors. Because, first off, they're anointed by God, so God is working through them to speak to you. And that's the voice that you're going to be hearing over and over again as you listen to your teaching with whatever is relevant to you. Because teaching is the remedy for any type of unbelief. So as you continue to listen to your teaching or your word that's relevant to you, you're going to start becoming confident in all that unbelief that's in your heart of how you can't do something is going to start going away. And then you're just going to start, that mindset will flip. And you're going to be saying, all right, I can do this. I can do this. Now, the third faith truth that we have to understand is I will always receive what I believe. Now, belief is powerful because it's going to lead you to your destiny. So if you don't believe that you're going to be able to do something, you're not going to be able to do it. And first of all, if if you're not going to believe you can do it, no one else is going to believe you can do it. Along with that, If you don't believe you can do it, any type of action that you take after that is going to push you further and further away from where you want to go. So you'll start making destructive destructive decisions that will just hurt you in the end, even if at the time it might seem like a good decision. But that's just because of your belief. Now, if you believe that you can do something, every decision that you make will push you towards where you want to be. So that's why it's important that we change how we pray. Because first of all, God knows everything, right? We all learned that when we were young. We all know God knows everything. So he already knows what you want and what you need. So coming to him in prayer saying, God, please give me this, please give me that, that's not really productive because he already knows. So that's why we have to change how we pray and start affirming and thanking God for what he's already given us. So if if we make the simple adjustment in our prayer from saying, God, please give me this, please give me that, to simply, God, thank you for already giving me this. Thank you for already giving me that. We're going to start seeing the results that we want to see. Here's what Jesus said about prayer. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Now, what's interesting about that phrase is that you believe, one, because that's what you need to do. You have to believe it first before you start praying it. That you've received it, past tense, like you've already gotten it because you're thankful for it, and it will be yours. That's a definite promise, that it will be yours. So when we start getting the results that we want from changing the way we pray, we have confidence in prayer because it produces the right results that we're looking for. 1 John 5, 14, 15 says, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. So there it is. God hears us. We're saying it confidently. We have belief. We know that's going to happen. And he's going to give it to us. The fourth phase truth is I will have to be patient with the process. This is probably the hardest one because no one likes waiting. <laughs> Me included. I don't like waiting for anything. You know, I wish when you, believe, when you ask for something, you get it next day, even that next minute. <laughs> but what's interesting about the word patient is it's the same verbiage that's used for someone who's under doctor's care. 
Now, during that process, you know, you're confessing, you're saying what you're supposed to say, you're in God's word, you're hearing it every day, you're making your confessions, all that. You know, and while you're waiting, God is working in you to prepare you for what you ask for. Because majority of the time, what we're really asking for, you know, any of our dreams or aspirations like that, we may not really be ready ourselves to receive it at that moment that we ask for it. So that's why this waiting process is so important. Because as we're waiting, God is making us and he's molding us to be able to handle what we ask for. So when we receive what we're asking for, that waiting causes us to be more loving, more forgiving, more prayerful, and more importantly, more reliant on God. Because as we endure the process, God is working in us and on us so that he can just work through us so that we can reach other people. The Bible says, talks about patience in uh, Hebrews 6, 12. He says, instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. Hebrews 10, 36 also says, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. So without patience, we're not going to get what God has promised us. So that's why it's very important to be patient. Now for me, like I said, patience was very hard for me. You know, those of you who know me, I play basketball, and I take it very seriously. Uh, You know, right now I'm a senior in high school, and I really never had to use these things until I got into high school, where I was actually hit with my first, uh, I guess you could say, obstacle. Because in that waiting process, that's where the devil will come in, and that's where he'll try to, you know, change your mindset to increase your unbelief. But that's why you have to stay strong, and stay strong in prayer and all that. So for me... You know, my first test was when I was a freshman in high school, and, you know, everything was going well. I was playing, you know, I, was, I went to CBA, Christian Brothers Academy, and very good uh, local team in Jersey, uh, you know, very respectable. I was playing as a freshman, which was unheard of. You know, sophomore year, same thing, starting, you know, doing things. Everyone knew who I was. I had some notoriety. You know, then junior year came, you know, I was ready. I was like, all right, junior year breakout year. Here we go. You know, first game, didn't start, didn't play that first game. You know, I had people from the opposing team ask me why I didn't play. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, I'm a, I was 16 years, no, I was 16, yeah, I was 16 years old, and, you know, I had kids, guys from the opposing team, parents asked me why I didn't play it, and like, you know, you can't really process that as a 16-year-old, because you just like, I don't know. So, you know, went through months and months of basically not knowing, you know, talked to the coach, made a bunch of false promises, you know, that really hurt. Um, So, you know, that process was really hard for me. You know, like I said, I was 16 years old, young. I didn't really understand this as much as I, as well as I know it now. So I was, I was depressed, you know, nothing really made me happy. Um, you know, like I said, just a bunch of false promises, like this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, I should be playing right now, you know, and that's where, this is where uh, the devil really tried to influence me, because at one point, it got to a point where I was like, man, I'm, I'm just going to quit basketball, like, I mean, I'm being honest with you guys, like, I really, I was about to just give it all up, because if anyone who's seen me, you know I can play, <laughs> I mean, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, so, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, like, I can play, but, you know, like, mentally, mentally, it just broke me down so much where I was just like, I don't need any of this, like, this isn't even worth it. So I was about to just give it up and just end it right there. And then uh, I had a really serious talk with my mother, and, uh, you know, that was probably one of the, definitely a conversation that got brought us closer because, you know, she was like, Trev, how long have you been playing basketball? I was like, a long time. And he was, she was like, are you good at basketball? I said, yeah, I'm good, but, you know, I'm not playing right now. And she just said, you know, well, that's all that matters. You're good. You got to keep going. You got you to fight. So, you know, after, like I said, a lot of praying, I actually started to apply these principles. You know, she challenged me to do my confessions, to think positively, get a new found, new, find new confidence, you know, tithing, all that. You know, I finally did that, and, you know, after more praying and whatnot, uh, I just, you know, God told me that, you know, CBA wasn't the place for me anymore. So, you know, I made my move. Mind you, it was February. 
a regular season ends in March. So it was like, where am I going to go? So, you know, I thought about it because I basically lost a year. I didn't get as much game experience. So I said, all right, I got to make a drastic move right now. So ended up going to St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey. Now, for those of you who don't know, that's like a national powerhouse. I mean, like TV games, Nike sponsored, producing NBA players, all the Knicks fans in the house. J.R. Smith went there. We're praying for y'all. Um, <laughs> you know, so that in, itself, that in itself was a faith move because here I am from Jackson, New Jersey. No one from up there even knows where this is. Like, I have to tell them six flags for them to understand where I am. <laughs> you know, like, don't have as much game experience, and I'm playing against basically pros every day in practice. So I went from a local team that was good in the area to a national powerhouse. So from the outside looking in, you would have thought I was crazy because, you know, that was, that was a big jump. But, you know, like I said, I had faith because I was like, you know what, this is where I'm going to be. This is where I'm going to play. I don't care what anybody else says. You know, did it. Uh, so that first year... So that first year I transferred, I transferred in late, and it was by God I was actually able to get in because basically they had started their second semester, you know, and like I said, thank God he let me in. So, you know, as soon as I got there from the jump, I was on the national team, which was a pretty big accomplishment, especially considering who we had on that team that year. Um, so I was a part of a state chip, won a, national, uh, won a, won a state championship, uh, unfortunately, we lost in the national championship on a buzzer beating three, but, you know, great experience. Um, then this year, I got hit with another <laughs> faith situation where I basically got snubbed off the national team to begin the year. Now, for me, that sent me back, like, so far because I'm like, this cannot happen again in my senior year. Like, you know, I just remembered all that pain I went through, like, for those of you who know me, like, I'm not a crier, but that whole situation, like, there are plenty of days where I just, like, just cried. So, you know, I'm like, this cannot happen again in my senior year. So, you know, talk to my mom again. I'm like, Ma, this cannot happen again. This can't. Like, I can't go through this, ag this again. Like, that's too, it hurt too much. So she said, she asked me if I was tithing. I'm not going to lie. I was slacking on that area. <laughs> so her suggestion was, Give everything you have and give it next Sunday. I asked her, what do you mean? <laughs> she said, have your bank accounts go to zero and give what you have and give it on Sunday. That was a sacrifice. <laughs> no, I'm serious, because like, I'm, you know, I'm, I was 17 at the time, you know, I was saving up money. I was like, all right, about to buy some things. And she's telling me to give all my money. So, you know, after thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, this is what I want, so I'm going to make any type of sacrifice to get it. So, you know, gave it all and, you know, gave it that Sunday. And what's interesting about it was that Monday we had a showcase game at Keene, and I got in and I played really well. So that was crazy because I wasn't playing prior, and then here I am playing in a showcase game in front of plenty of coaches, and I played well. And so basically from that point on, you know, I stayed strong with tithing, did what I was supposed to do, made my confessions, all that. And, uh, you know, just been playing well ever since. Unfortunately, the season's over for us now, but, you know, like that was just a great experience. I was really able to see how faith worked and like, you know, applying these principles into my life and how it worked out for me. Because what's also crazy about it is when you follow these faith principles, you get in contact with people that'll help you get to where you want to go. So for me... I ended up meeting a national, a, a national champion's mom, so I'll just let the media team show you who I got in contact with. Mm -hmm. I need you to believe in the God that your parents are talking to you about and the one that you know. I need you to believe in the gift that God has given you. I need you to believe in your talent because if you don't believe, then you won't be able to receive the abundance of what God has for you. Now, 
getting in the place that God has for you, and I believe it's basketball, and your mom and daddy here are the biggest fans right now, God can choose whichever avenue to send you in. So don't get discouraged. Stay elevated in that place of confidence that God is going to get me in this thing because this is where he wants me to be. And then let him use you while you're in there. Now, that's just oh my mama way. Yeah. Bless you. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was really a blessing to me. That helped me out a lot. So but like I said, you know, you use faith, you can get in contact with people, and just everything will go right for you. So, I mean, if I can do it, there's no way you guys can't, um, you know. So just keep walking by faith, and it's going to work for you every single time. Amen.